Dusk Haven has plenty of custom content such as new raids, heroic versions of old raids, mythic plus dungeons, new quests, zones and on and on. But what really makes it stand out from most other vanilla plus realms are the custom pseudo classes, radically different ways to play the old classes. For example, priests can toggle on their teachings of the monastery to play as a monk, which is a melee DPS or tank. Enhancement Shaman can don a shield and become a stone ward. Night Elf or Blood Elf robes can do a special quest chain to become a demon hunter. Undead and Dwarf Druids become bards. And relevant to this video, Gnome Hunters become Tinkers. At some point, Goblin Tinkers were also supposed to be a thing, but for one reason or the other, that race hasn't made an appearance yet. If you want to be a Tinker on Duskhaven, you have to be a Gnome. In this video, I'll tell you more about the Duskhaven Tinker. Their spells, gameplay, talents, glyphs, gear, strengths and weaknesses. So you can decide if you want to give it a go yourself. If you like this kind of content and want to see more of it, consider supporting the channel by liking the video, subscribing and leaving a comment below. Alright, let's get right into it because there is a lot to cover here. Selecting a gnome hunter will bring you to a custom starting zone experience, which you'll have to go through to learn your basic skills. You'll also get an instant teleport to an instance version of Nomergon, where you can find a vendor for your tinker skills via tomes and a portal to Stormwind. You can also get your artifact weapon here, the Steam Pistol. A pistol which can be upgraded by completing raids, and until level 60 it scales with your level like the bind on account items on retail. It's basically a tinker version of a demon hunter's glaives or the bard's loot. As a Tinker, you also get your own mount, the Mechaneer's Chopper. If you view the Tinker as a heavily customized hunter with gadgets, you're on the right track. They've got a lot of custom spells, which we'll get into soon, but they also keep the ability to use quite a lot of hunter spells. I'll list the most prominent, and this list is probably not exhaustive, so keep in mind that this can change at the drop of the head, at the whim of the developer, without any warning or notification or consideration for the community. Tinkers can currently use the following Hunter spells. Cursed Arrow, Hunter's Mark, Black Arrow, Explosive Shot, Misdirection, Flare, Tranquilizing Shot, Concussive Shot, Viper Sting, Scorpion Sting, Readiness, True Shot Aura, Aim Shot, Chimera Shot, and Rapid Shot. Most of these are pretty niche and won't see much use, but you'll want to put things like Hunter's Mark, Cursed Arrow, and Misdirection in your rotation. And if you spec into the Marksman tree, Aim Shot, True Shot Aura, Chimera Shot, and Rapid Shot could become a part of your rotation. Likewise for Survival and Black Arrow and Explosive Shot. You can also use Tracking, except Track Beasts for whatever random reason, which you should definitely turn on depending on the type of mobs you're facing, if you're spec'd into improved tracking at least. Just like regular hunters, you'll be using mail and leather mostly, and you can use nearly every weapon, except one-handed axes for some reason, and two-handed maces. One-handed maces are an option too, even though they're not in your skills tab and they're red, which is just a graphical bug. This means that agility, stamina, crit, mace from Mythic Plus is a great option for tinkers. This brings us neatly along to the talents portion of the video. As you're a hunter, you can choose between Beast Mastery, Marksmanship, and Survival. Beast Mastery is probably the worst option. It has a few talents which boost your turns, but they're really not worth it. Survival has quite a lot of interesting talents to boost your damage, such as Survival Instincts, Lightning Reflexes, and Killing Instinct. And you can use Black Arrow and Explosive Shot as a tinker. For the longest time, I've used the full survival spec, but as far as I know, one of the current best DPS specs is full marksmanship, giving you access to aim shot, true shot aura, chimera shot, and most importantly, rapid shot. All that being said, the other best option is a mix of marksmanship and survival, picking up strong early talents such as careful aim, lethal shots, and mortal shots in marksmanship, and then going down as far as you can in survival. If you go that route, you basically ignore hunter shots like aimed or explosive shot and focus completely on tinker only spells. An approach that appeals to me personally and which seems to yield very high damage. As far as glyphs go, there aren't that many options at all. Probably aim shot and chimera shot if you're marksmanship and explosive shot if survival. Definitely pick up glyph of hunter's mark. There currently aren't useful minor glyphs at all 
So yay, that saves you some money. All right, let's get into the meat and bones of this video, a tinker's spells and general gameplay. As a tinker, you've got a vast array of spells, which can broadly be classified as mechanicals and pets, shots and their enhancements, and buffs and various other skills. To start off with, you can have two permanent mechanical support pets up at all times. HK Stabilizer heals random players and provides armor scraps, reducing their damage taken. Little Bomber bombards your enemies and throws scraps at allies, increasing their damage done. These little dudes aren't under your control. They can and will attack at random, cannot be dismissed, and they die pretty fast. So keep an eye on not summoning them in front of mobs, and resummoning them if they die during a fight, they give out useful buffs. Apart from those, there are temporary mechanicals of which you can only have one up at a time, such as your turrets. Flame turret sprays fire in front of it for 8 seconds and slows the enemy's movement by 20%. Has a 12 second cooldown. MGX2 turret is a machine gun which shoots bullets at random enemies for 8 seconds with a 10 second cooldown. Both of these have a 0.5 second cast time and summoning them gives you second wind, healing you, and gives your group and raid replenishment. Really useful, but honestly their damage is underwhelming and usually not worth it. You can also summon a road roller, a small tonk which charges at enemies, dealing AoE damage and incapacitating them for 3 seconds. This seems very bugged at the moment, or maybe I'm just not doing it right, but it doesn't seem to do anything at all. You've also got the Distractor 2000. It's just a target dummy with unlimited charges on a 2 minute cooldown. There's a random buff bot too, Adran HK. It increases a random player's haste by 5% for 20 seconds. A pretty underwhelming, weaker version of a priest's power infusion. And finally, there's my greatest invention. A robot which assists you for 25 seconds and attacks enemies for decent damage. And while it's active, your haste is increased by 30%. Has a 3 minute cooldown and a 1.5 second cast time. This is your big cooldown. Use this during Bloodlust, Heroism, Zerg phases and try to keep it up as much as possible. You've also got a skill named Tune Up, which boosts your active turret, making it attack and cast 10% faster and deal 15% more damage. It also works on your other summons, but apart from my greatest invention, it doesn't seem to do anything for them. I highly recommend adding Tune Up to the relevant abilities in a macro such as this one. That way you can just press the button for your turret or robot twice and you'll have a tuned up mechanical up and running. Moving on to the actual damaging spells you as a tinker will be using, we first have to talk about Scrap Bullet, which is your main ability around which a lot of other spells are based and with which they interact in some way. It's a 1.3 second casted ability which you can use while moving. This gives you awesome mobility. The tooltip says it has a cooldown, but that's not the case anymore, you can spam it. You shoot for physical damage, and it increases your nature damage by 2%, which stacks up to 4 times. If you use it when defusing bomb is on the enemy, the bomb flares up and deals additional nature damage to the target and nearby enemies. Defusing bomb is an instant cast spell on a 6 second cooldown, which throws a bomb on your target, causing some damage, and causing Scrap Bullet to react violently, meaning it'll do quite a bit of damage. Use this ability on cooldown. There are several ways of modifying your Scrap Bullet, such as Rocket Launcher. Transforms your Scrap Bullet into a Rocket Launcher for 12 seconds, causing it to deal additional damage during its duration, and it also synergizes with Diffusing Bomb. It has an 18 second cooldown, so I would recommend putting it on the same button as Scrap Bullet in a macro, that way it'll be up as much as possible. Modify Scrap Gun Fire. Your next Scrap Bullet causes your attacks to deal 5% additional fire damage for 6 seconds, and it sets the target on fire, dealing damage over time and increasing its fire damage taken by 5% for 10 seconds. Modify Scrap Gun Frost. Your next Scrap Bullet causes your Diffusing Bomb to place a freezing effect on the target dealing AoE damage to all enemies and slowing their movement speed by 35% and attack speed by 10%. Modify Scrap Gun Nature. Your next Scrap Bullet causes additional nature damage. Pretty boring effect, but it does hit hard, especially considering the buffs from Scrap Bullet. The Modify Scrap Gun effects do not stack, so if you use the skills one after the other, the previous effect will just disappear until you cast a Scrap Bullet, which will use the currently active effect. The general idea here is to use a modification, cast Scrap Bullet, use another modification, cast Scrap Bullet, and so on. 
Once all three modes of Modify Scrap Gun have been used, you can activate Modify Scrap Gun Overload, which causes your next Tesla coil to increase your critical strike damage and haste by 15% for 10 seconds, and you gain all other effects from Modify Scrap Gun. So definitely cast a Scrap Bullet when this is active. Tesla Coil is your hardest hitting ability. I've had it hit for 12k and I'm not geared at all. It has a 25 second cooldown and a 2.5 second cast. You can move while casting. And you can only use it when the mode of your scrap gun is changed. You overload your gun with lightning, causing a lot of nature damage. And the next load of scrap will deal an extra 50% nature damage. And then finally, we've got load of scrap. This is a melee attack, a 1 second cast. Load your gun with scrap and deals damage in a cone in front of you shredding the enemy's armor. You can only use this while Modify Scrap Gun is active. It feels a bit weird having to suddenly run into melee range and then back out, because otherwise your auto shot won't work anymore. So basically, what you've got here is a lot of conditional spells, which you can only use when certain other skills have been used, or when they're active. In general, they interact pretty well with each other, with the exception of Lotus Crab, which seems to me to be a remnant of the previous incarnation of Duskhaven Stinker, and should just get scrapped or get turned into a ranged ability. And finally, there are some miscellaneous spells. Power Generator. Every two minutes, you can create a power generator which buffs nearby players, giving them 3% more critical strike damage, and their attacks do 3% additional nature damage for 20 seconds. Take care, it's an instant spell, and it removes any of your active turrets or greatest invention. Nano Booster. One minute cooldown, you instantly heal for 30% HP and about 40% of your mana. It also procs replenishment. It sounds overpowered, but you can definitely use the mana regen. KT Silencer. This is a raid wide buff, which reduces everyone's threat by 15% and their pushback reduction by 20% for an hour. This theoretically doesn't apply to tanks, but it's a good idea to have them click it off anyway, because, as usual, it seems bugged. Mechanized Armor is a passive buff, increasing your health by 10% and reducing your threat by 15%. Frost Grenade throws a Frost Grenade and freezes enemies in place. Basically a casted, ranged Frost Nova. Jetpack instantly causes you to float above the ground, leaving flames behind for 12 seconds, and you take 30% less damage, deal 10% more fire damage, and are immune to silencing, interruption, fear, and stun effects. This is basically a defensive cooldown with plenty of other effects baked into it. It's pretty fun and situationally really useful. You can also use it as an offensive cooldown to power up Rocket Launcher and modify Scrap Gun Fire and just deal good AoE damage. Quite a lot to take in, right? I would say a Tinker isn't beginner friendly at all compared to other classes. So how does this all fit together? What kind of rotation or general gameplay are we looking at here with Duskhaven Stinker? All of the above might give you the impression that Duskhaven Stinker is complicated as hell, but it's actually not that bad. To begin with, set your tracking to the type of mobs you're going to face. 5% damage is decent, at least if you're specced into improved tracking. Then get your little mechanical companions up, they're a source of free damage and healing, although make sure you're not too close to the boss or mobs, as they'll just randomly attack and you cannot stop them. For the fight, put Hunter's Mark on the boss. You could also get an Adran HK down if you want. Misdirect the tank, or whichever DPS is likely to beat you on the meters and you want to get rid of. At the beginning of the fight, get either my greatest invention going and tune it up, or put a power generator down now. Or if you've got a bloodlust heroism coming up within 2 minutes, probably save it so you can align your cooldowns. Remember that power generator will dismiss your robot, so don't use them at the same time. Oh and use tune up again once it wears off on your robot. The main rotation will be rocket launcher on cooldown, put it on a macro with scrap bullet and then spam scrap bullet, weaving the modified scrap gun effects in between each cast, as well as throwing a diffusing bomb every single time it's available. Go for modify scrap gun overload and tesla coil when you can. Rinse and repeat, keeping everything on cooldown, using Nano Booster the moment your mana hits 60 or 70% or so, if you have mana issues. Just keep spamming Scrap Bullet and weaving all the effects in. As for Trash, Heavy Cleave or AoE situations, you could go in melee range, turn on Jetpack, Flame Turret and tune it up. Use Modify Scrap Gun Frost on cooldown, likewise with Diffusing Bomb. Use all modes of Modify Scrap Gun in between, so you can overload and use load of scrap. It's a bit clunky, but you can pull off excellent numbers. Alternatively, you can just stay at a distance and rely on Diffusing Bomb and Modify Scrap Gun Frost. This also does plenty of damage, so it's what I would recommend. All that being said, this is roughly how I play. 
and how I've seen others pull off good numbers with a similar playstyle. But as this is a recently reworked pseudo class on Duskhaven, it's perfectly possible that going full beast mastery and heavy focus on turrets turns out to be the surprise new meta spec, or that full marksman or survival pulls off better numbers. I just prefer focusing on tinker only spells for the most part and leaving the hunter spells to hunters. Anyway, moving on to engineering. True to the fantasy aspect of a tinker, you're also a master engineer, which basically means your engineering skill gets increased by 50 and allows you to learn both gnomish and goblin engineering. And you can create new gadgets and mounts exclusive to tinkers, in theory. In practice, I couldn't find any new gadgets or mounts whatsoever, so I guess this is still a work in progress, or it might get scrapped altogether in the future. As a gnome, master engineer, you can easily get to level 300 without ever needing to use any thorium, which is definitely handy. Your maximum engineering level is 367 for some reason. You can actually learn some TBC engineering recipes, but there's no way to get the mats, so that's another exercise in futility. Engineering is mostly a PvP-oriented profession with several useful trinkets, but having access to grenades, dynamite, separate charges and the like definitely help with your AoE damage if you want to min-max. To be honest though, you can definitely skip engineering as a tinker on Duskhaven without any noticeable problems, which is a shame and a missed opportunity. Finally, let's go over the tinker's strengths and weaknesses. The tinker's pretty complex. There's always something to do, it's a very busy class, which means you won't be bored just spamming one spell every fight. It's pretty fun and inventive, with a lot of spells interacting with each other and influencing how other spells work. Strong damage. If you know how to play Tinker, you can definitely top the meters. I've seen tier 2 gear Tinkers easily top 2.5-2.7k DPS single target. Good utility in the form of pushback and threat reduction, passive extra damage and healing, replenishment, and the power generator. Free portal to Stormwind via the instant teleport to Nomrigan. It feels pretty true to the fantasy aspect of a tinker, with modified guns, turrets, and other inventions. You've got an instant heal and mana regeneration tool on a pretty low cooldown. The jetpack is a fun and strong offensive and defensive ability, and it allows you to get out of some routes together with Escape Artist. Great mobility due to jetpack's mini sprint, Escape Artist, and the fact that you can cast most of your spells while moving. Your artifact weapon, the Steam Pistol, is pretty good and well optimized with currently multiple versions. It reduces your damage dealt by 10% in the basic version, but by doing raids you can upgrade it. If you want to level engineering, you can do it much cheaper than other classes can. You can misdirect, which means you've got pretty decent aggro management. You get a pretty sweet ride for free, the Mechaneer's Chopper. Alright, there are also some weaknesses you need to take into account. A Tinker is prone to mana issues at weaker gear levels during prolonged fights. Despite the 1 minute massive mana restoration nano booster and replenishment effects. However, if you've got a good mana potion ready, you should be fine in most cases. The Tinker is complex at first glance. You have to keep track of a lot of things and really know how spells interact with each other and when something can be used and when not. You're pretty squishy with no real oh shit buttons like Divine Shield or Ice Block. You can't use Feign Death, unfortunately. The Tinker is not beginner friendly at all. It's confusing as hell having all these new spells on top of all the hunter abilities which you can learn but have to find out you not use. Apart from this one, I don't think there's any guide out there to help new players. Thinkers can only be alliance at the moment. Your small mechanical boost pets aren't controllable which means they can randomly attack mobs or even a boss and cause incidental pulls. You share loot with hunters of which there are plenty. But that's about it. The weaknesses can mostly be alleviated by gear and experience, and there aren't any real red flags which make it an undesirable spec to play. In summation, Duskhaven's Tinker is a pretty complex, fast-paced, frenetic, strong, and fun pseudo-class. And it's really taken me by surprise with how much I enjoy playing it. I can highly recommend giving it a go. Anyway, that's about all I've got for now. Are you interested in playing the Tinker? Or are you a pro at the class and want to correct me? or add something I forgot to mention, let me know in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching and see you in the next video.